Good afternoon. Glad you could join us to a job consideration in absentia. Lawyer Miguna Miguna's nomination continues to excite debate online and on the lips of most Kenyans, including the Nairobi Senator Johnson Sakaja, who has declared that Miguna Miguna cannot be deputy governor. In a letter dated 16th of May 2018, Nairobi Governor Mike Mbuvisonko expressed his choice to replace his former deputy, Polycap Igade, who resigned in January 2018. Sonko wrote to Miguna Miguna stating that, and I quote, I hereby forward my nominee, lawyer Miguna Miguna, to undergo full vetting process and approval by the county assembly for the position of deputy governor. The nominee meets all the requirements provided for in the Constitution and the Leadership and Integrity Act, the Election Act, under the Government Act, end of quote. Uh, trying to track the kind of relationship that Mike Mbuvi Sonko and uh, Miguna, Mingu, Miguna Miguna, the lawyer, have had over the years. Remember, Miguna Miguna was vying in Nairobi for the gubernatorial post last year. So let's just take a look at what kind of relationship they have had online and offline. At 11 p.m. on the same day of that particular nomination letter, when it was handed to Miguna Miguna's lawyer, Cliff Ombeta, Nairobi Senator Johnson Sakaja turned to Twitter to openly reject Sonko's choice, saying that Miguna cannot be deputy governor. And that is the specific tweet that uh, Johnson Sokaja, the Nairobi senator, made um, to the hundreds of followers he has on Twitter at 9.26 a.m. Um, uh, this morning after it emerged that Mike Mbuvi Sonko, the governor for Nairobi, had nominated Miguna Miguna as deputy governor. Now, in 2016, even before his election, Election, um, to the office, Mike Sonko expressed his willingness to work with Miguna Miguna. But the former gubernatorial candidate ridiculed Sonko, claiming he would not join forces with a cartel. And um, on your screen, you can see tweets of Miguna Miguna um, in 2017 late saying that there is no way that he would be a member of the cartel a thief or a drug lord, and he would not work under Sonko as the deputy governor. It will be very interesting to hear what Miguna Miguna has to say about this particular nomination. But last night, his lawyer, Cliff Ombeta, received that letter uh, from Mike Mbuvi Sonko and took it to the uh, speaker of uh, the Nairobi County Assembly, British, Beatrice Elachi. I understand we have Cliff Ombeta on phone. Um, uh, he is expected to speak to us um, any minute now to just tell us what is the latest. It will also be very interesting to hear what Miguna Miguna would have to say about this and whether his lawyers really know whether he's going to accept this particular nomination or not. So Clifford Better will be joining us later from our city center studios here in on KT and News Desk. But for now, let's speak to Kai, Kai Kissinger, who is an advocate, to just try and understand um, uh, the dynamics that surround this particular nomination and what it means for the county of Nairobi. A very good afternoon to you. Thank you for joining us here on KT and News Desk. Your reaction to this latest move by Mark, Mike Mbuvi Sonko? Uh, thank you very much. I think this debate has three issues that uh, one must look into in terms of understanding what is going on. One is the moral question, the second one is the political question, and the third one is the legal question. When you come to the moral question, and as you clearly indicated, Mikuna Mikuna, Mikuna has dealt with the has, has this moral question to deal with. In the past, and specifically during the campaign, if you recall, he abused Sonko and the other contestants for the position, being Kidero and Peter Kenneth, as being themselves the cartel. On social media, he has been criticizing by all means the leadership of Sonko. Can he now accept this appointment? That's a big question that we need to be asking ourselves. Mm -hmm. Can he then turn against his moral integrity, which he claims to have, and work with that who has no respect for him? Both are strong characters in terms of nature. Are they able to work together as a team to transform Nairobi of what we really want or what the Sonko team promised during the campaign? Is he going, Mikuna Mikuna, to swallow his perceived pride and humble himself as a deputy to Sonko? Being a deputy calls upon loyalty and respect towards your boss. Is this actually feasible? Time, of course, will actually tell, and this is a moral 
or integrity question that is at trial, and Miguna is the only person who can answer that question. Okay. The second challenge that we now have is the political question. Mm -hmm. In politics, anything is possible. We have seen in this country and in Africa and the whole world as, uh, as general, whereby politicians appoint or collaborate with their perceived polit political enemies. They bring their rivals and, and critics close to them to achieve certain political gains where they may think they might not be able to achieve. At time in politics, you need to, 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 to actually understand and learn how to fix what you can't fix. Like they say, keep your enemies close to you. Maybe politically, the combination of the duo, being Songo and Mikuna, may just solve Nairobi problems that Songo says he is facing. Management of the city is not a mean task. Mikuna Mikuna may concentrate on fixing cartels which of course was his campaign strategy as he was campaigning and then Songo can be left to do with other administrative tasks and duties. Who knows? Maybe the two combinations can be good politically for, for Nairobi County. However, uh, one needs to understand that uh, bringing the two together brings in a very, a very unique breed in terms of uh, managing the challenges of the city. Now, uh, People may keep on criticizing exactly what Songo is doing, but I think they are criticizing Songo because Nairobi County politically is a very huge county, there are 6 million people, the dynamics are huge compared to other counties, so he's actually on the receiving end. But my plea to Kenyans and Nairobians to try and give him time. I think when he got and left, it brought a lot of challenges to Songo to manage the city, and he's trying to put his house in order. It might take time, it might not take time. But politically speaking, can you imagine if maybe Songo is appointing Mikuna Mikuna, and he knows very well that Mikuna Mikuna will not go through in terms of vetting and follow all the other legal processes? Maybe that could be a tactical thing that Songo is dealing with so that people leave him alone to do what he has to do. But more important now as a lawyer, is the question that comes in is the legal question. Being a deputy governor, you must be appointed. And the requirements of appointing a deputy governor is the same as appointing a governor. That's why when they are going into a political contest, they go in as a pair, as a party. Therefore, there are those legal requirements that, song, that Miguna Miguna must meet. Mm -hmm. Must he comply with Chapter 6? That's a, a, a big question. Must he, he must be appointed by a party that supported Songo to, to Parliament. The last I checked, Mikuna Mikuna is not a Jubilee uh, member party, and there are requirements in which one can become a member party before he becomes a, a, a deputy governor. So that's a legal challenge that will be, will be, will be facing in terms of Mikuna Mikuna. Okay. Being approved. All right. All right, thank you very much for agreeing to speak to us. Kakai Kissinger is an advocate saying that this latest move by Nairobi County uh, Speaker, uh, by Nairobi County Governor Mike Sonko, uh, faces three questions, the moral, political, and legal question. Currently, uh, members of the County Assembly are addressing the press, over the, uh, the press over the same speaker of the County Assembly, Beatrice, Beatrice Elachi, is currently speaking. Um, just adding her voice to that latest debate. Let's cross over there live and listen. I think I'm saying what happens when you're in a political party. That is why Jubilee, <laughs> I mean, Jubilee is the one that is ruling the county assembly, to be honest. So whoever nominee is going to face, the majority will be Jubilee. So it is important for them to have this, their party telling them, this is our nominee, you can't let us down. But if you just bring it, it means you have put also the county assembly into a very awkward scenario where we, the, the, even the nominee will have a big task in lobbying all these things. So the, the party gives you also the strength of giving you the opportunity not to have to really lobby so much for you to become the deputy governor. So for me, I'm saying what the law says, by the way. I know it is, but they, they say what? The law is on us. Yeah. And uh, that is all I'm following. I'm, and I'm, I, in the end, the speaker is guiding the process. I want you to get it very clear. The county assembly, this is the power of the county assembly. That's how powerful they are. They will decide. I might say my legal part, but when it comes to the floor of the house, if they pass, well and good. That is the decision of those who were elected by Nairobians. And anyway, before you even go to that, isn't it fair? Nairobians who went and voted for Jubilee? Isn't it fair? So you are saying that for Mikuna, you will present them to the House. But one of the things you are saying is that 
yang dimaskan dari sertifikat komunitas ini pak, sertifikat populer. And 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 for that, so that we don't make it a big issue, I wish you followed the process of Nyeri. It seems nobody followed. So you need to go look at how the Nyeri deputy governor was cleared. It will help us without uh, feeling that are you introducing a new thing. So I want you to go to the Jubilee party. They are the ones to tell us how they proceeded and they cleared the deputy governor of Nyeri. It is, we cannot now set our own process again. We have to set, we have to use that precedence. That's what law does. So we already have a precedence. I have no choice. And when I looked at it, that is the same procedure they use. And that's why I'm saying that. I'm not saying because I'm introducing. I'm saying what I've just received. Because I called the party in the morning. I said, we have a Nyeri precedence. In law, you look at precedents that are there and what is happening. So I was given. That is the same process she was taken through. First, you have to be the member of the party and all that. Same. Same. County Assembly Speaker Beatrice Elachi there speaking um, as, uh, of course, on that latest nomination of Miguna Miguna uh, by Mike Sonko as the Deputy Governor, saying that Mike Mbuvi Sonko is not being fair to the electorate who elected him in office. And she says that Sonko is not fair for those who voted in Jubilee, saying that largely the Jubilee Party will have a say on this. And, of course, she has confirmed that, indeed, she received a letter um, of uh, nomination from Buvi Sonko nominating Miguna Miguna. Well, earlier on, we also spoke to Kaka Kissinger, who, who has said that um, there are questions surrounding this. That is the moral question, the political question, as well as the legal question on this. But I want us to take a short break. We still have a lot more Landa for you on this issue and the various voices that have been on the same. I also have a response from Miguna Miguna, who I spoke to a few minutes ago. So don't go too far.